In episode four, Christina heads on over to the Winthrop house, and Letty immediately comes out wanting to know what she's doing there. And Christina tries to come into the house, but she's not able to. And it all has to do with the precautions that that voodoo witch doctor took. So they're going to have this conversation on the porch, and Christina asks, who helped you evict Hiram? And Letty's pretty curious to how she knows about that, but then figures out, oh, you must have been the one that gave me the money. And Christina kind of admits it. Christina then tells her about how Tick tried to kill her and says that if he keeps acting in this manner, it's going to get Letty killed again. And Christina doesn't want that. In all honesty, she doesn't even want the house. She wants something that's in the house. She wants Hiram's orrery. And the orrery is that structure that had Hippolyta transfixed. And unbeknownst to Christina and Letty, Hippolyta actually took it from the house and has it in her green book shop trying to figure out exactly how it works. But since Letty has no idea what it is and hasn't seen it, she tells Christina to kick rocks. But as soon as Christina leaves, Letty heads on over to the library to track down Tick. Tick is doing some research on the family, but Letty is pissed. She first yells at him for trying to kill Christina, and then she yells at him for knowing the whole time that it was Christina who actually bought the house, but he failed to tell Letty that. They then get back to the whole trying to kill Christina part, and he lets her know that she can't be killed. He tried. She must have had some kind of spell on him. And Letty asks, well, if she can't be killed, does that mean that Samuel's alive? And he explains, no, he had to lift the curse to open the Garden of Eden, so no, he's actually dead. But Tick thinks that he was sent in there by Christina as a Trojan horse to get her father out of the way. Letty then notices that Tick's bags were packed and says, I can't believe you were just going to go kill her and leave us here. But he says, no, I'm not doing that. I'm not leaving town until I know that everybody's safe from her. That's why I'm trying to figure out a way to stop her. He then tells Letty about the lost pages, and he figures that if he can get his hands on those lost pages, combined with Titus's blood that's flowing through his veins, he can probably decipher it and start casting spells of his own to protect everybody. The problem is, he's come up completely empty on all of his research. And Letty says, why don't you just go ask your dad? I mean, he's done all this before, right? But Tick gets very dismissive, saying he doesn't want to involve him at all and kind of shuns her away. But then he starts noticing that in all the library cards, Montrose did check out all the books that he's currently reading and he's just wasting his time. So that night, he meets up with Montrose and Letty at the bar, and they're kind of coming hat in hand trying to find out if Montrose is willing to help them, but he's not. And this really upsets Tick, so he storms off. Off, and Letty ends up cursing out Montrose, saying, I can't believe you're going to sit here and watch your son continue to look for answers that you already have. And as she's about to leave, Montrose says, do you have family in Boston? Because I think I know where to find the vault. So the next morning, the group packs up to leave, but they also have some unwelcome guests. Because Hippolyta and Dee are coming with them. And Hippolyta is still very suspicious about everything she was told about her husband's death. So when Montrose came to her and said that Montrose, Letty, and Tick were heading up to Boston, she felt like she should come along. And they don't really have a choice because it's her car. And to make matters worse for Tick, as they're leaving, Tree, the guy from the bar that he really doesn't like, ends up hitching a ride with them. So Montrose, Tick, Letty, Hippolyta, D, and Tree all head up to Boston together. And Montrose is convinced that the vault is in this history museum, and he's got an in with one of the security guards there. So that's where they head. And when they arrive at the museum, the group kind of goes their separate ways a little bit as Tick, Letty, and Montrose go looking for the vault, with Tree kind of tagging along. And the group figures the best place to start looking for it is in the Titus Braithwaite wing of the museum. This wing has all of his artifacts that he was given upon his journeys around the world. And as Tick is looking over some of these artifacts, you kind of get a sense of why he doesn't like Tree. Tree is pissed off at Tick because Tick told Letty that Tree told him that they used to hook up back in high school. I know, it's confusing. But Tree thinks it's kind of a violation of a man code, and Tree thinks it's revenge for when Tree sent Tick back in the alley to watch Sammy, the bar owner, get a blowjob from another guy. But Tick says, I don't really care about that. Sam is free to do whatever he wants. But Tree says, well, I thought you might want to know about that because after you left for the army, your dad spent a lot of time with Sammy. And in that moment, Tick looks over to see his dad talking to that security guard that he has an in with. And you can tell the comment by Tree really bothered Tick. So when Montrose comes over, Tick says, how exactly do you know that guy? And Montrose says, oh, he's a friend of the bar, but you can trust him. And the security guard is going to let the group in that night to start snooping around, but they don't have a ton of time to do it. But the good news is they figure they already know where the exit to the vault is. Because in the center of the Titus Braithwaite wing of the museum, there's a massive statue of Titus Braithwaite. And it's gotta be there. So that night, they sneak back into the museum. And when the moon hits the statue, the ray from the moon goes from the statue to a glass case where there's a map. And then back to an unassuming part of the statue. And when Letty presses it, sure enough, the vault opens. So Tick heads down and finds three doors and yells up to Letty that he's going to need that map, which is a little bit of a problem for Montrose since he told the security guard they weren't going to mess with anything. But Letty becomes Letitia fucking Lewis, breaks the glass, steals the map, and heads down into the vault. And Montrose isn't going to stand there alone, 
so he heads down to the vault as well. And they're trying to figure out which one of the three tunnels they want to follow. And Letitia convinces them to go down one, and after about 20 minutes, they're wondering if they made the right decision, but it's too late, they can't turn back. And eventually they come to a part where it's just a wooden plank, and if you fall, you're probably going to die, and they can't see what's on the end of it. But with no other choice, they have to go forward. So Tick ties her up with a rope, and Letty's the first one to get on the plank, and everything's going great until she comes to a booby trap part and screams. So Tick goes on the plank to find out what's going on and figures out that it is a booby trap, and she's just going to have to time it to get by it. Tick and Letty are able to do that, but once Letty crosses the booby trap part, the plank starts disappearing pretty quickly, and Montro starts freaking out because he wasn't on the plank. So Tick kind of runs back on the plank to help out Montrose, and Montrose throws him his bag full of stuff that Tick drops. But luckily, Tick does catch Montrose, and the two quickly move towards the end of the plank, where they find a door with a bunch of push tiles. And they're trying to figure out the exact combination, and somehow Montrose knows the exact combination to use, and luckily, they push the right combination... They open the door just in the nick of time right before the plank disappears entirely. They get to another room where there's a bunch of water and because of a saying that was on the initial tomb, Tick has figured out that the water in the vault is only going to continue to rise with the tide and they don't have a lot of time. They probably have about an hour, so they better hurry the hell up. And that's what Tick does, but that's not exactly what Montrose and Letty do. And they feel like Tick is kind of leaving them behind to the point where Montrose says, is this what they taught you in the army? And that really pisses off Tick. He storms back and says, no, they didn't. I'd never leave a man behind in the army, but I knew that I could trust those people. And Montrose says, what the hell do you mean by that? And Tick wants to know how Montrose knows all of this information, how many lodges there are, the exact combination to the crypt. And that's when Montrose reveals that George on his deathbed gave Montrose the Order of the Ancient Dawn bylaws. And Montrose read them, but then he decided to burn them entirely, trying to close Pandora's box. And the only reason why he's currently helping them is because Tick is so steadfast at getting to the bottom of this that he felt like it was his duty as a father. So as the two continue to argue about this, Letty, realizing they don't have a lot of time, continues to move forward until a body floats by her and she freaks out, noticing who it is. It's one of her neighbors. And that gets Tick and Montrose's attention to continue on, and that's when they find the elevator to the Winthrop house. Yes, they were somehow able to get from Boston to Chicago. But as they follow the tunnel, they finally get to the end of it. And what they find is an arm sticking out of a wall. And the arm belonged to Hiram Epstein. It was ripped off, and we know this because when the ghost of Hiram Epstein appeared, he was armless. So Tick grabs the arm, rips it out, and also takes the ring off of it that belongs to members of the Sons of Adam and puts it on. And he hesitantly puts his arm in there, hoping that his blood is good enough to open whatever door it is. And initially, whatever's in that door grabs Tick and starts cutting him up, and he freaks out. But then they notice that his blood is filling these tiny little cylinders at the top of the door. And sure enough, a trap door from the ceiling pops down with a ladder. And when the group follows that ladder up, they get taken to a ship with a bunch of skeletons in it. But Letty does notice the pages, and when they go to grab them... One of the skeletons that was holding the pages starts coming back to life, really freaking out the group. And the woman transforms the way she was into a human and starts talking this language that nobody understands except Tick. And she tells Tick that Titus came to her village looking for somebody to transcribe the pages and she agreed to help. And initially, she had no reason not to trust Titus, but... When she found out who he was, she refused to decipher another word. And that's when Titus trapped her, telling her that he would reignite her with her people. And he did, in fact, do that. But the way he did that was by killing all of them and trapping her in this room. And it wasn't until someone with Titus's blood came that she would be brought back to life. And because of the fact that she was brought back to life and she knew of this whole thing about Titus's blood, she's a little hesitant to even trust Tick. But Tick lets her know it might be his blood, but we're not family. I don't... I'll mess with that guy. Even so, because of that initial betrayal, she's not willing to help Tick and his group. So Montrose says, we don't have time for this. He grabs the pages, but when he does that, the windows start to crack and water pours into the room. So everybody ends up frantically heading back to the elevator and making it back just in the nick of time. But when Montrose asks the woman if she's okay, she lets out a scream that is painful to everybody's ear. To the point where Tick actually has to knock her out. Now when Tick does get back to the house, he's able to somehow communicate with her and figure out that Titus must have put a spell on her that if she ever escaped, she would be turned into a siren so she couldn't talk. But Tick tells Montrose that he's going to teach her English, that way they can better transcribe the pages. And then Montrose does something that he's really never done before. He tells Tick that he's proud of him. And he also tells him that his mother would be really proud of him at the moment. And Tick, not really sure how to react to this, just says, all right, I'm going to go to bed. Thanks. But after Tick does that, Montrose heads back into the room, whispers into the woman's voice, I'm sorry, 
and then slits her throat. Now, once again, they were somehow able to get back from Boston to Chicago following those tunnels, and that left D and Hippolyta in Boston traveling back by themselves. And D asked, how in the world did they get back so quickly? And Hippolyta, who is pissed off, knowing something's not right, says, I have no idea. But then she notices that D is reading her dad's atlas. And when she looks at it, Devon County is circled. So instead of heading back to Chicago, Hippolyta bangs a U-turn and says, we're going to go get some answers. And then to give an update on Christina, after she left Letty's boarding house, she ended up going to the police captain. And the police captain isn't thrilled to see her, demanding to know what she's doing there. And she comes clean saying, I'm here for Hiram's orrery. That's the key to his time machine, correct? And he yells at her for coming into his lodge's territory and taking what's rightfully their property. But she looks at him and says, I'm sorry, did I miss your official initiation into the order? And he stands up and says, well, I certainly didn't miss yours. It's still no women allowed. And then when she leaves that meeting, he puts a tail on her. Although unfortunately for the police officers who were tailing her, William's onto him kicks the shit out of him, and tells him that Miss Braithwaite doesn't like to be followed. But William has plans. He heads to the bar to find Ruby singing the blues because that day she headed to the department store that she's been trying to get a job at for quite a while, only to find that they hired another black girl. So she is in a mood. But William starts buying her drinks, and initially she doesn't want them, saying that she can buy her own drinks. But he says to her, what if I told you that I could change your life and I could keep that promise? So the two continue to drink the night away as Ruby vents to him about the whole thing with the department store and about how they're not going to hire two black women. But then she also looks at him and says, you better stop looking at me like that because it's not going to happen. And in every TV show and movie, when a woman or guy says it's not going to happen, you know it's going to happen. And sure enough, it happens. They head back to the house. They end up hooking up. Ruby accidentally ends up cutting her hand, which William ends up licking the blood off her hand in a really weird moment. It's also worth mentioning when he takes his shirt off, he has some really weird markings and scars on his chest, but the two end up banging their sorrows away, literally. Thank you so much for watching this recap. Please consider subscribing to the channel. If you don't see the next video up in the corner, don't worry, I'll get it up in a couple days. Hit thumbs up if you liked the video, hit thumbs down if you didn't, and be nice in the comments section.